Yes. Was that one okay? Yes. Was that okay? Are we oh gonna go God, with that, that one? That was awesome. Okay. Okay. <sighs> we did it. I can't believe I did it. What's going on? What's, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> I had some fart notes in there, but whatever. If if you guys like it. Yeah. I hope you guys like it. <laughs> I, mean, I thought it would. Everything Corey did was sounded fine to me. <laughs> wow, was, that was so beautiful. Did you know what was going on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? I mean, I don't know what's going on, but that's the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for real. What is really going on? That song. <laughs> I just want to feel that song all the time. I mean, it's probably in my top five. I mean, just overall, like for, I mean, the content, you know, the feel you Soul. get. Oh. Guitar sounds good. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, MN14, or is it? 214? No, MN14, one four, yeah. One four. Probably shouldn't mention that they're not making them anymore, but they're going to make a it's gonna be an upgraded, upgraded version of this. So there's going to be, um, as far as we know, abalone rosette around the sound hole, probably just extra decoration. Oh, man, I like it how it is. Yeah. I like it, too. If it ain't broken... Don't Keep fix it. it. <laughs> well, there'll be a couple out there with this design. You guys can get them. It's such a big sound at a affordable price, like under six hundred bucks. You get a um, you get a variety of guitar sounds as well, not just nylon or classical, right? Yep. But what what's nice is you could play whatever you want on it, and you could go back and play a regular, you know, like for the purest. You can play like a classical. Well, it sounds like a full size guitar. It doesn't sound like a travel size instrument. Because you would think like the nylon strings would end up being like super floppy. Yeah, it it hits the the deep bass notes correctly. Yeah, I mean, it's like it has the right tone, the right strings on it, so it responds really nice. My allergies are working. Yeah, it responds (laughs) really nice to whatever other genres of music you want to throw at it. You can do bossa nova. Oh, so you're going from E to G D. <laughs> There's always that over overdub like voice, right? <laughs> for you guys like say um there's something like that where it's like um like two major chords um a step down from each other and you're soloing over it do you modulate your solo to the key or do you choose one okay i usually do so if it's like a an e flat major seven or e flat whatever or or e E major seven i mean E e major seven yeah I play it, um, like I'll do. I just play it. I just move it according, you know, it's, it's really all moving a half a, or a full step down or a full step up, depending on which direction you're going. I didn't know whether there 
was like a key that would cover both of them or something. Yeah, in the middle, if you want to play, uh, you can play just a play in G. It would be like the, the, the four and the five going back and forth, yeah. Oh no, not G, I'm sorry. Yeah. I look at that as just playing in, you know, two different keys in one song. Right, you know, yeah. It's like, I, I don't really try to get too technical because there's probably some kind of, you know, name for you know, maybe the mode that you're actually playing in because the song is in the key of E. Right. You know, but... Um, but I don't know. It is kind of, it, the feel is a, a modulation back mm -hmm. and forth. Like, yeah. And it's yeah. very common with Boston yeah. over right, music right, right. that kind of stuff yeah. too. So I guess you just modulate with it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's weird because, like, if you're not used to, to playing songs where there's, like, two keys that you're kind of, like, switching, you know, back and forth between, it's really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> it took Can so be. long to be able to do this. Like, people don't know. <laughs> but then when you realize <laughs> what it really is, yeah, you're like, oh, all right. And then oh, you just play that have again. fun connecting. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You can just play, like, the E major scale and the D major scale and you'll be fine. So, like, like to play the, the two chords. So that's the E, and then it goes to the D, and then it's gonna go back to E, so I'll play E major scale. And then D. That's all it is. Um, if you take like your simple um, C major scale well, up here, just remember that like you can consider the open strings as if you're barring but you know you can't really bar it so if you take that concept and move it all the way up here and just put your pinky down maybe or your ring finger down on the a string three frets away from where you're barring um you can take that same pattern and apply it to any key or if you want to get fancy you capo your nut and then whenever you switch between chords, you put the cable. <laughs> take it off. Do, do you guys think of your scales in terms of like chunks, like shape here, then the next shape, then the next shape connected? Usually, yeah. yeah it's, it's like like a bunch of, sh like uh, it's a lot of different shapes to choose from. So it's just a matter of knowing where you are and where that chord shape or that yeah. scale is and for those chord. who are learning scales it's like it's a, it's a good thing to learn all the notes around all the chord mm -hmm. so it does take a while but if you just take one string at a time you know that might simplify the process for some people yeah it does <laughs> it had to be like that way for me because i couldn't really think quick enough like from string to string you know skipping from fret to fret yeah but when you know all the notes around there you can figure out the melody of a song mm -hmm. a lot easier, right? So, um, for example, um, I played, I was trying to follow that melody or keep that melody around the E major chord, right? Which is, you know, the scale around there is. Once you know all those notes, it's like, oh, it's, it's one of these, it's in this range, the melody. Or you could do you could take it with uh, simple notes or just single notes. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, and then you just figure out how to do that on the next string and the next string and so on. Yeah, so what's it the caged system? Like where you play you play all the notes around here, and then the first inversion. to the first one <laughs> yeah so like the um the notes following like the c shape right and then the next uh shape for that would be the a shape yep because if you know that and then you yeah pretty much know them all g e yeah. d yeah but they're just um they're just shapes and then you can see how they 
connect and you kind of figure out where you're at better. Yeah, because if you have the, I guess, relative minors, right? Um, you're playing the same scale. You're just starting at someplace yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, basically. So learn your relative minors. That's very useful. Hey, um, Clay, will you uh, show the basic chords of what's going on? Oh, yeah. So tell us what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I have no clue. Uh, a <laughs> right. lot of things are going on. <laughs> uh, I don't um, know if anybody knows <laughs> anymore. <laughs> what the? I keep forgetting. I was going to say it's in, it's in the key of A. And I was like, no, it's not. Oh, because <laughs> you're thinking ukulele. You're I'm watching. thinking in big ukulele. <laughs> So, sorry. In the in the beginning, like the whole intro is basically just one chord. Um, if you listen back and watch what Corey's doing, um, basically what's what's going on is there's gonna be an E major seven that's played. Yeah. So it's just a, a bar on the fourth fret, and then you can use any one of your free fingers. However, is easy for you to hold this chord. I like to use my ring finger on the A string, uh, sixth fret. So you get this. This is an E major 7. And then when the song starts and the melody comes in, it's gonna, you're going to go from E major 7 to a C sharp minor or even easier, a C sharp minor 7. So all you're going to do is lift up your ring finger and then you get the second chord. So let's try this uh, with the two chords in the beginning. So 1, 2, 3, E. C sharp minor 7, back to E, good, C sharp minor 7, okay, and then you're going to go to an A, F sharp minor, B7, of the, the song um, there's a section in there where you're going to be going from the pre-chorus to the chorus and that section is going to be repeating with two chords F sharp minor and B7 and it's going to go three times so it's going to sound like this That's the entire song. Um, there's a section where there's a bridge. Um, that can get a little weird. This is when there's a modulation. Um, you can kind of still think E major, but really what you're going to be playing if you're playing on soloing is A minor. So, And during this section, it's going to sound like this. So you're going to be on this A minor a long time. <laughs> on low G is that uh, one where the the um, where the seventh is on the high note on the G you know where you go oh. up a step and it's like uh, the two uh, uh, the seventh is on the high note because see on the uh, on the high G oh okay but you can't have it like if, if the low root note is the major seven that's it true it throws it all up but you can Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, what is that? 
Oh, that's the M100. So if any of you guys are, if you notice, um, the M100 does kind of look similar to the M52, um, but there's a huge difference. <laughs> um, this is an all solid build, African mahogany, Sitka spruce top, uh, and we got a spalted maple rosette, and all solid, I mean, and the sound you get from this is, it's, def solid. it's a, it's a, it's a big upgrade from the M52, and we are very impressed with the M52 as it is. Um, I heard you guys earlier playing Ain't No Sunshine. Ooh. Ooh. We're gonna get a Rasta. Yeah. <laughs>
felt really good. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Um, Both instruments oh, are flat, also like great values on solid wood instruments. And uh, you guys are a great value too. Oh, Thank thanks, you. man. Thank you. Yeah. No, you're you're a, a great greater value. value. <laughs> <laughs> oh shucks <laughs> alright well love all around Corey talk about what you got so this is basically the upgrade of I would say the M52 um, because of the spruce top so very nice Sitka spruce it's a lot of figuring to this and that's what I like a lot there's a lot of the vertical grain patterns but some of the dark natural browns that can you know, be present in spruce as well. Ebony bridge and fretboard. Um, this is the same feature rosette that is on the Moonbird series. So you get a little bit of the bird um, in here in this model. Whereas the M52 has a regular uh, rosette. Mother of Pearl? Mm -hmm. Abalone. Yeah, or one of those. Um, Acacia binding. No, no, wait. Yeah, it is acacia binding. I remember looking, and I, you know, it blends very well with the uh, back and sides. It just, you know, you could see the purfling, black purfling line, which is a really nice touch. The color on this African mahogany is really nice. It's all solid, too, by the way. Same gloss finish. It's a very smooth and even finish, but not a heavy one that would affect uh, the tonal. Um, capacity at all and it's the same size so you get a uh, very big sound from a very small instrument on top of that because it's a little bit of a shorter scale from other guitars the um, you know you don't have to do a lot of stretching if you do you know these brave chords what I like to call them Everything, even up here, when you're doing um, chording or soloing, there's a lot of space up here. It's really, really comfortable. Yeah. Anyways, ebony bridge, fretboard, mother of pearl, inlay on the fret dots and side dots, as well as the a new new man on the headstock with the you know inlaid into ebony and the goto uh was it 50 i forget the series um the high-end goto tuners that are really smooth really easy to use so how much does it come out at for 9.99 yeah, as of now, 2022. Yeah. And, you know, the M200 is the same thing, but with rosewood back and sides, right? And it goes for how much? Seventeen ninety nine. So it, you know, and some people would choose mahogany for, you know, it. mahogany has its own sound, you know? It's nice. But in terms of well, value, yeah. I put the M100 super high. Oh, yeah. I mean, what, what comes with it as far as, like, features and sound, it's... Yeah. Something you won't regret getting. Definitely. And it's, I think it's an easy, you know, it's a thousand dollars, but it's 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 an easy thousand that you would just be like, oh yeah, it's. What are you talking about? <laughs> easy thousand. Because when has a thousand dollars ever come it's... easy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe ten years ago yeah. when uh, inflation wasn't so bad. But maybe you know, it's like, in it Las Vegas, be... if you're <laughs> if you're balling, not um, like me. Now, as far as like it, it, uh, it takes a little bit more for people to pull the trigger on something that's a thousand dollars. So it's like with this, you you would instantly just be like, yeah, I'll I'll take it. I'll I'll pay the thousand dollars easily. Okay. To get one, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because a thousand dollars, that's well, you know, what you're getting is a super awesome uh, small body. You know, I mean, it's the twenty-four inch scale, travel size. Yeah. And, um, you know, it kind of reminds me of, like, in the realm of, like, the baby callings kind of a yeah. thing. Mm. But affordable. Yeah. So these Very come cool. with um, phosphor bronze light strings. 
I feel if you want like a, a more articulate and clearer sound, um, what you usually do is you bring up the string tension in which you use a medium gauge um, string set on here. The only thing is if you do that, I would recommend lowering, lowering the action as low as possible because it can, it can get pretty hard on the fingers. But you get at least 20% more volume, bass, sustain, just by switching to mediums. Attention does Maybe make a big difference 20, like in volume. 22%. Uh, I gave it a <laughs> modest 20. 22.9%. <laughs> All right, so Kalei had, uh, you know, what's been a bestseller for oh, a, yeah. well over a decade for us, the Pono AT Geisha yeah. Tenor. Staple model tenor yeah. ukulele. Um, starts at three ninety nine for the satin finish, and these are actually available in a deluxe high gloss finish. Um, for an extra hundred bucks, you can get that at four ninety nine. But this has been one of our most popular models as far as tenors go um, for the longest time. Because what you get is a fully solid acacia body, front, back, and sides, and a satin finish and a mahogany neck. And Pono does something to their standard models that most ukulele manufacturers don't, where they put a truss rod. Kind of over here i'm not sure if you can see it uh, but that allows you to adjust the relief on the neck so if depending on where you live the neck in the wood is always going to be bending forward and backwards um, usually when it gets tight or you know when the wood gets dry it starts to shrink and you know things happen so if you want to get um, some really nice slick fast action on your ukulele a truss rod does really come in handy and solid uke. Yeah, it Sounds adds really nice. stability in there even if you're not adjusting and I think it even helps the sound a bit for what's transmitted through it. Yeah, wasn't the the MT as well as another good that was like for the longest time the most sold ukulele on the site huh. for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, ukulele. that's the mahogany that's tenor awesome. and yeah the the acacia tenor here. Did the acacia surpass the? Is it, is it? Who's who's winning? I don't know. I I think like, from just hearing from customers and walking to the store, they're looking for something as close to coal as possible nowadays. Yeah. You know, so this is kind of an alternative uh, because they come from the same species of plants and trees. Um, you get similar sounds and looks. Um, biggest difference is just the shade of color on on acacia. It has it tends to be more in the brown. Ah, you know what? Um, Caramel. Let, let me grab an MT and we'll get 30 seconds on each before yeah, we move. You can do that. Yeah, it's kind of different with Pono. Like, I found their mahogany to be on the brighter side a lot this of times in the acacia to be the warmer of the two this is interesting because like a lot of um i guess a lot of luthiers and in some or some luthiers have told me that like mahogany tends to be a warmer sound than acacia yeah of the difference in de density no and in other it? brands i've heard that too hmm. it's just um yeah, it's just the way the with the type the of acacia line. and uh, type of ponderan mahogany and how they take their specs. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of like works out it's that like way a, a lot of times. Special acacia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. High grade acacia. Mahogany does break in a bit more. Like ponderan mahogany after the first year warms up quite a bit, but. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, so we're gonna get into some even more affordable models now. Corey gets back. It's better if you have a marker. <laughs> right. <laughs> I 
good you get, partner. You get, you get assistance. Sometimes if the partner is not good, it's better to just have a looper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the looper will always keep up. In fact, like, you might, you can't keep up with it. Yeah, it's, it's gonna out-loop you. Like, Alright, dude, I'm gonna uh, go to bed now. See you later. <laughs> Bust out that looper. <laughs> That would be our, yeah, walking away here's the drum machine. <laughs> Corey keeps sneaking on this AC. I call this Neobot. The looper. I am. <laughs> it's the looper. What's wrong? Just tell me what's wrong. <laughs> Corey, if you're mad at me, just tell me why you're mad. <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> Imagine so the... hearing that late at night by yourself, like. Is that? Oh. It's the many huni that comes and haunts you, but yeah. just plays weird ukulele. Notes. What if for some reason that's just the most beautiful thing you've ever? Heard? <laughs> you're just like God. I wish people liked my music, so, but wait, oh, oh, you're not afraid? <laughs> no, this is beautiful, man. <laughs> so the T4 and C4 are beasts for the cost. Yeah. Solid cedar top. So my cedar is one of the best tone woods you can get. And this is your guys' dream series. So I guess you dreamed of an affordable cedar top. Yeah. Was it two twenty nine? Two twenty nine. Two twenty nine. <laughs> You get, I mean, I think this is probably my favorite line out of the Hawaiian Dream series. Um, you all know that Corey and I are big fans of cedar, and um, this really came through really well. Love the tenor, love the concert. Sopranos, just as impressive. We just couldn't get much in. <laughs> yeah. So right now, um, we're limited on supply of tenor, so get them while you can because they're going to disappear really quickly. And with these, you get a lot of volume, good sustain, and a good amount of warmth. And because they're also strung up with fluorocarbon strings, you know, it just brings out more character of the instrument overall. More punch. More punch. Yeah. You know what theme I always wanted to figure out? Uh, the price is right. Wow, that's yeah. hard. Oh, the bass line is really nice. It's funny, this is the one hour version. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has that oh playing on it right now. Just, just leave it rolling. Somebody's torturing somebody in an office somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim. <laughs> That was like one of my great grandmother's most favorite shows. Was Price is Right. I remember watching that every day with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What should we play? <laughs> Something. I know it goes through like a, like a. Uh, E flat and then to a G7 to a C. <laughs> it was a weird combination. Uh, 
let's try. Just trying to see if I can remember the chord progression. Because I, I know it on guitar, but I can't figure it out right now. On the keyboard. Oh, okay, it's G. Sorry, D. Same chord as you, my bad. Oh, really? <laughs> Sweet. Was that cool? Yeah. So I forgot the melody, but we kind of made it work, right? Yeah. That was the first time we ever played that song together. Wow, we're playing like really good songs. Waiting on the World to Change. And then What's, what's going, going on? on? Yes, very socially uh, <laughs> conscious. I'm socially affected yeah, right. by what's going on in current events. Affected? Well, can't can't help. Just in the atmosphere. We're just True. humans living on Earth, trying to figure out, you know, trying to wait on the wait on the world to <laughs> yeah. get a little yeah. better. Come on. Really, though, you know, thinking. You know, to like this John Mayer song and the Marvin Gaye song, I think 
music and the arts has always shined a light on really what the bulk of humanity hopes to see and that's uh, peace and love and you know working together yeah all of those good things unity Mm -hmm. unity so let's keep it affordable and get into some other models this is the anui nui t4 and c4 find them at the ukulele site.com they're awesome all right we'll get into some leilani's next he did a review on it Uh, oh, Kavika did a review of the Tonga Yep. Wow. Beautiful workmanship. They let me custom design with a with a magnet. It is big. Yeah. Comes along with it. But then again, I don't know how this video is. Yeah, but like, really love how this thing helps. Probably like adds it volume and effects and performances. All. Jamming in the garage in your living room. Really cool sound. I love it. Delays. Wow. I wonder where the the echo or the speaker of the unit is placed. So I have it set is it to going through setting. that thing that's over here? I think where it's it attached at, it vibrates the back. How, 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 why, how mm. But because like it's from the back, when you hold it up against your body, it doesn't get muffled, right? It probably does some to a oh, certain okay. extent. We'll review it when we get one. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, so we're on. But Lego they're line. not cheap. I mean, they're like uh, close to three hundred bucks. Yeah. I think the acoustic only is like three two eighty nine, and the one that you can plug in or uh, electric acoustic is like 329 ish or something like that you know? there so i mean like getting like jesus christ sorry <laughs> mm. oh man we're in oh no we're going to outer space now but then outer space is made of liquid and it's like a big ocean <laughs> Louder. <laughs> I outverb the reverb. Wow. Swimming. All day, <laughs> piss people off. <laughs> my, my uke is spiritual, and that's not. It's on got the max angels setting, inside. <laughs> so, Corey, explain uh, how you're getting these angelic tones. What technique are you using? Yeah, it's right. all in the fingers. <laughs> like Which, what I'm doing is I'm squeezing incredibly is, hard. So is that like a super painting. island strum? It's a super island pit. Actually, if you're truly in touch with God, you have the you divine can draw power. out these. <laughs> so, this is like uh, how Thor has his hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how like every ukulele company would want you to be there. <laughs> the, the 
the ukulele of what is what is the name of the place? What place? In Avengers, where Asgard, uh, uh, Asgard, Asgard, <laughs> the ukulele of Asgard. Is it coming through clear? I mean, you can sounds... control the amount coming through, but it sounds great. There's the so that was just re reverb, and then here's reverb and. Just be like a Into whole like session by itself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Corey it noodling on the <laughs> Leolani effects. <laughs> I'd buy the album. Oh, me too. Right away. Each song would be named after the model. T eighty five G. So we were talking earlier about the Tonewood amp, which you can um buy, which is kind of cool because. Uh, well, we're going to get one in and we're going to compare that. But this is a more affordable version and it's lighter in weight and um, sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. Remember the last time we did this, remember we were playing and you were like, what is that noise? <laughs> remember the first time I heard this, I was like... I don't see wait, are you, you're not plugged in like how is this possible <laughs> it's cool as like it transfers over and it sounds amazing plugged into like an amp yeah, yeah. you <laughs> plug it in and the effects and I mean, they're nice it's like do something with that. That's the furry fountain from Zelda. Oh, what was that? So. Just closing my eyes, just the sensory, like, I don't know, like, there's, yeah, that's a trip. dry you people be like what are you high like, <laughs> but it sounds really good <laughs> it's pretty awesome but like um dragon or like some of jake's stuff he like used oh you know how to play it maybe i don't know
Dude, right? I was just that was ridiculous. I, wow. I'm pretty sure I messed up on a lot of parts. I didn't hear any of them. I feel like that was uh, like Corey brought a knife to a gunfight, but it, he did okay. <laughs> I, I was battling God. <laughs> yeah, right. I was trying oh. to like find where I was gonna like, wow. like you know, place my finger to do this, but then I put it in the wrong area. <laughs> I couldn't really. Oh yeah, you couldn't. Yeah. Couldn't <laughs> That's sweet. All right, so the the model that uh, Corey has we haven't featured yet. I mean, we've been selling it in the store for years, but I guess we. I think it was we, on the website. Yeah, it was on the website years ago, but it's been a while. This is the Okume concert, Thin Body. And Okume is like the more attractive mahogany. <laughs> and uh, all jokes aside, but um, it's like a nicer version of mahogany. Well, no, I mean, it's got a slightly different shade and all. It, it's, yeah, so it's, it's a little more blonde. beautiful, though. You got uh, Leolani always picks really good wood sets, and it's very attractive. It's very curly. This one has a very nice, pleasant waviness to it, along with the color. It's a very soft-spoken color, but to, you know, for a concert, it has a lot of sound, a lot of volume. It's like. Warmer than you would expect for sure. Yeah. Especially since it's a slim body. Yeah. It's so easy to play. I don't we don't usually play concerts. It's a comfortable ukulele. Especially if like for us we're we're coming from like tenor sizes, you know, which is just a two inches bigger in scale length, but most times like you feel a huge difference with the concert and sometimes it can be uncomfortable. Yeah. That I feel totally comfortable with. Yeah. And it's I don't know, what, a couple hundred bucks or something? I mean, they're like, around two they're under years. three. You said it was like some, like around two I believe it's one ninety nine. Wow. Yeah, very robust. some other ukes for you guys. Wow. These sell really well in the store. Yeah. They're like punchy. I'm, everybody's Hot looking hits. for an affordable core ukulele and this is um one of the best alternatives out there instead of 
spending thousands of dollars, you can get one at a very affordable price under 300 bucks. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna stretch these out real quick. I think I should do the same. Fakila. Fakila. There's definitely a lover out there that named their daughter Akila. That's a real name, yeah. That's a, that, that, that is an actual name. It's not bad, too. It's kind of nice. Yeah, it has a nice ring to it. Aquila? You get it? It's got a nice ring to it. Stuff. Yeah, good one, right? Dad. Ah. Just can't help myself. Start teaching it. <laughs> I'll start. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> so this this song um, involves three chords, and a lot of you are should be, or probably most likely you are um, familiar with these chords. And these chords are C major, F, and G seven. And in the beginning, um, there's a vamp between the C and G7, so the one and the five chord. And then it goes. Okay. And then when we get into the actual main part of the song, you're gonna stay on C. So C, F, back to C. C, G7. If you notice that after we go from back to the the C in G7, we're vamping three times before we go to another round. So pay close attention to when I'm switching the chords, especially when we're going to be repeating this section again. So let's try this together. Um, we're going to go from C to F, back to C, and then from here we're going to go G7, C, and we're going to be vamping three times with those two chords, C, G. So it should sound like this. One, two, three, C. F, C. C, G7. C, G7. 
seven. C. One more time. Repeat. One more time and C. F. Back to C. C. G seven. C. So <laughs> Corey, like going that would that's like beginner level, like to intermediate, how do you start to incorporate the melody with um, the chords? So, <clears throat> you want to first familiarize yourself with the, if not the lyrics, the, the melody of the song. And it really goes like this. Starting off on the second fret of the bottom string, you're going to hit it twice. And then you're going to slide up to the, slide up or hammer on to the third fret. And then before, or right after that last pick, I usually follow with a strum. You do that twice, so. And after that second strum, F, while holding the ring finger on the bottom fret I mean a bottom string third fret and then following that is an open string and back to C but you're gonna play C with your ring finger on the second string instead of the you know your usual C because the melody will fall on that G right there so open string and then open C. Then you're gonna hit the E twice. And then third fret, second string. You're gonna hit that twice. And then bottom string. And then second string. So it goes. G7 there's this little lick here that is can be a little bit difficult but you know with practice you can you can get it down so what it is is you're gonna open the A string you're gonna play that open and you're gonna hammer on your ring finger on the second fret and you're gonna pull off and then you're gonna hit your G string on the top so then you're going to hit the second fret on the bottom string and then end it with a C. And that's kind of the lick right there. I know it's kind of fast, but this is what it sounds like slowly. Oh, I forgot to mention those two first ones. There's like a a stutter, right? Is that what it's called? Like a rest or something? Yeah, so... mentioned when I hit the G7 chord I'm not hitting all of them I'm only hitting the top three strings and then following along with the that vamp lick and then that hammer on is just you could either do it with just your pointer finger or if you want to add fullness to that you can hammer on your middle finger on the second fret of the third string together with that that pointer here on the F first fret uh, second string so so you're really just hammering on the top part of a G7 chord 
and that's the I guess most basic way you can play the melody I hope so One thing, the uh, so you actually strum that half. We'll call it the half C. Um, every time you play that part of the the melody. So what I'm talking about is it goes. Yeah, it you strum it one more time at that part. After doing the, you hit the E twice. Then you add your ring finger on the third fret of the second string. You actually follow along with the the partial strum, you're not going to strum the whole chord, so. So one more time. we usually do it is just for the advanced watch his fingers <laughs> so yeah <laughs> I think so, just keeping it as simple as possible no but like yeah you can go next level with like you know teaching that I just feel like we're gonna like open up oh, 20 minutes yeah. of Different and picking patterns and, and stuff. We'll save that for the exclusive members. <laughs> yeah, actually, we do need HMS exclusive lessons from you guys. It's been due. I mean, you've given, but like not enough. And yeah. uh, I feel like we give people a lot of like stuff from the podcast. If you find it in between, you know, the music and us having fun, but um, we need to get you guys back on and. If uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's at our website. We have member exclusive lessons, and yeah, tons of great teachers, Craig and Sarah and Mika and Ian and Aaron and more. These guys, um, so go check that out and mahalo for your support on that. I want to end out with um, a couple Pono models. I only have old videos of for some reason, so. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, what chords were you playing? I was just gonna like, it was just E minor, G major sevens. And it was just like.
sweet. I, yeah. You know, um, one, one of the things I was thinking about just now is like the Instagram contest we did, like especially like the um, instrumental ones just shows like how many awesome ukulele players are out oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, that made me very excited. That was just a sampling of the talent that's like, you know, I mean, it's awesome to see what's happening with Uke, but it made me think about like how many of those players have a really good baritone. And um, you see the RBSH behind you there? If you grab that one, I'm gonna um, make that the prize for what? a new <laughs> Instagram instrumental ukulele uh, contest. Are you sure? Of course, you don't have to play baritone, just any ukulele of any size. And um, yeah, the top 10 are gonna get GCs for $100 like we've been doing at the website. And somebody's gonna win this solid cedar, solid rosewood, back inside baritone pro classic Pono. Look at that. Look at that. That's some gorgeous rosewood right there. I and own a Pono baritone myself with the same wood combination, except mine doesn't have the slot head and it has a cutaway also. I thought yours was spruce. But that's a... Oh, that's a cedar! Oh my gosh! Oh, dang! Oh, okay, so I'm wrong. I stand corrected. No, but yours... Oh, it sounds amazing. Oh my goodness. Well, when I picked up mine, it was already like six years old. <laughs> It's, like, it's been played a little bit. <laughs> you can't bring it as Meditational.
Mm. Nice. The baritone just takes you into other places too, oh, yeah. right? Other moods. It inspires like different songs. You get really great sustain on that one too. Yeah, and mm. even though it's the same key as a as a guitar, it doesn't feel like you're playing a guitar. It's like no. it's still completely different from. Feels like you're playing a baritone. You. Yeah. Yeah. So the amazingly talented Tobias Eloff runs our Instagram, and he's going to be posting up uh, the, but probably by the time you guys are watching this, there'll be a link in the description that you can see the rules as to how to enter. And yeah, even if you don't win, it's fun. And um, my favorite part is at the end, like just being like, dang, these guys are killing it. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for your support. And we're going to be back next week. These guys are going to bring their A game. Oh. Oh. Again? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we got. <laughs> all right. I don't know. You want to, You really want to get this bag of away? <laughs> oh, it's too late now, baby. We love you guys. Aloha. <laughs>